Hey, it's Teddy here. I'm going to go over the uh, resealing and rebuilding of an SX lower unit. This is the earlier style um, from the late 90s, 2000s, up until about 2005. So the replacement for this is the SXA, the newer drive. So this is the older version. Also, some of the things about this drive is you have some of the um, older OMC tools from the OMC Cobra slash SX drive, where there was combination. We're gonna go over some of the tools that are similar. So in this video, I'm gonna take this drive apart. I'm gonna show you the special tools and the tools that you need, the hand tools to take it apart. So let's get started. Okay, as always, I have some of the special tools laid out and I have the book at the ready. I always follow step by step using the service manual so I can stay in order. I've got my white paper ready. I'll replace this and get the special tools off so when I take everything out of the drive, I can put it on a nice clean furnace paper and keep everything clean. So some of the tools you're gonna to need to start is you're gonna need a 3 8 socket, 3 8 extension that's gonna take the bolts out of the carrier. You're gonna need a Torx T27 to take the lock uh, set screw out which holds the retainer in. So first off, there's a set screw here. It takes a T27 Torx bit. We want to break that loose. It's got Loctite on it. I'm going to take that out. Don't lose the set screw. And you're going to put it back in, put a drop of Loctite on it. I'm going to do a reassembly reseal on this lower unit just to go through the tooling and also the reshimming of the drive. So there's your set screw. Next, I need to take the bolt out. There's a bolt inside the carrier. So I need a 3 8 socket with a six inch extension. Slide that in there to take that bolt out. Next, to unthread the retainer from the housing, I'm gonna use this tool, which is the old OMC part number is 914-864, or the Volvo part number 3850707-5. And I'm gonna use a three quarter inch to half inch adapter and a breaker bar to unthread that carrier from the housing. Make sure when you're ready to pull this out, you catch these, the bolt and the spacer piece. I also have on the end of this maybe stuck is the shim. And there's a shim in here, so the spacer is the shim that fits here. Now I'm ready to take the vertical drive shaft out, so let's do that next. So to start, I need these tools and assemble this 3850609 tool. And then I need this guide plate tool, which is to center this tool. And in the book, this part number is 350613. And I'm going to slide that over here. I need the uh, pinion nut holder tool. This holds a pinion nut. This is 3854864. And then I can slide that down inside the housing that fits into the forward gear and it holds a pinion nut. So I'm going to rotate the drive shaft and line that up. When, there we go. Alright, so that's centered and that holds a pinion nut. I now need the 3850598 spline socket tool and I can break loose the pinion out at this point. I like to go one full turn, and then what I want to do is I want to take, now I want to take the retainer tool that holds the retainer in, that part number is the same as DPS 350601. 3 8 extension works well for a handle. And remove that retainer at this point now.
the O-ring out. Now the retainer is ready to have the rest of the threads taken out for the pinion gear, so I can simply unthread that nut with the tool still assembled in it. And then the vertical drive shaft comes right out. So here's the vertical drive shaft, and what I want is I want that special tool I use for DPS that's in the vise, and I'm going to put it in the vise now. So drive shaft, intermediate tool welded into a piece of plate. The rest of these tools come out. So I need to remove that race, the pinion race. I use the same tool that's used in the DPS. That's 355-859. And again, that tool has a specific way it needs to be installed. So it has a flat shoulder on the larger tapered side that's going to fit underneath that pinion race, and it's going to pull that race up. I also need this threaded shaft. That part number's in the book. And then I need this... Uh, older OMC part number 914700 or in the book this is an incorrect part number it's 3850619 the book says 3850613 and I can make sure that's the right tool because it fits the housing just like that so I'm going to take this tool with the step side up I'm going to take this with the recess side the larger tapered side facing down towards the tool so I can slip it under the race. Thread that down flush, put that in under the race, pick it back up, put the guide plate back down, and then I'm going to put this nut down and pull this out. And, and I'm going to take a baseball wrench here and just pull that out. You may have to hold this in with a wrench. So I have the race. I pulled the race out. There may be shims down in here under the race. These on the actual tool itself. So these are the pinion gear shims. Okay, down inside the housing, out comes the pinion gear. And I have the pinion nut. Rotate the forward gear a little bit as you pull it out, and you have the forward gear. And lastly, we're going to pull this race out with a slide hammer. Alright, I got the shims and the race out, and that's it. The case is pretty much empty. There is a uh, intermediate bearing to support that vertical drive shaft that rides right here on that drive shaft area. Okay, so that's the procedure for taking it apart. I went over the hand tools, the T27 Torx bit, the 3 8 bolt that you need to take out, the retainer removal tool, your pinion gear tool and your spline socket to hold that drive shaft, the tools to take that uh, pinion gear race out and a slide hammer to take the forward gear race out. I'm not gonna take the intermediate bearing out. Um, that's another tool that you would drive that bearing out. That is a loose needle bearing, cage needle bearing in here. You wanna make sure that that bearing is, uh, all the bearings are installed before you try to remove the race so you don't damage the housing of the race. Housing gets cleaned at this point, clean and inspect all the parts, and then we're going to go through the shimming procedures in the next video. If you like the video, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video on how to reshim the drive.